Good morning. Um, for just a minute, I'm going to say shh and just listen for a minute, okay? Um, you can't talk amongst yourselves. Think amongst yourselves for just for just a few seconds here. are in. <laughs> yes, that's right. <clears throat> the bell tower was erected last, last week, and they're going to be ringing at least every morning and call us to worship at 9 o'clock, so if you hear them ringing when you're driving in, you know you better hurry, so that, that's going to happen. Okay. I want to say thank you to everybody who played a role in that project and, and bringing that to fruition, so thank you for that. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Salem Lutheran Church on this Reformation Sunday. It's good to have you with us this morning. Especially want to welcome those of you who are guests worshiping with us today. We're glad you're here and we welcome you to our community whenever you'd like to worship with us. We also like to welcome those of you who are joining us on Facebook. Um, please join us anytime you like. And if you'd like to be with us in person, we're here in Deerwood, um, downtown Deerwood at 9 o'clock every um, Sunday morning. And we'd love to have you with us. Just a few announcements to highlight this morning. First of all, prayer concerns, you can see them. They're printed in your bulletin. Um, but the only person we know of who's hospitalized at this time is Dave Archibald, so please also keep him in your prayers. <coughs> 2022 offering envelopes are in the, the Narthex lobby this morning and are, they're arranged alphabetically, so please pick them up as soon as you can. It's much easier to pick them up than to try and mail them out. Um, today is the beginning of script order week. You can pick up a form and, and fill it out and then be sure to return it by next week, November 7th. Let's see. Today, today is Trunks for Treats and that's gonna happen from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Um, hopefully the whole community, well, actually the whole community is invited to come and be a part of that and we'll be um, passing out candy. There'll be hot dogs and hot cocoa inside and all sorts of um, scary characters around. So please come and, and be a part of that. Are there other announcements that need to be made this morning? I believe there are at least some. Come on up. Morning. I wanted to uh, give you an update from Alaska. Uh, Jason has accepted the position of director of outreach both of them both of them will be uh, starting January 1st um, some of you have asked me about installation and that's really a function of when the bishop is available so we will probably be doing that uh, some sometime after they they get here um, also the uh, accepted an offer on their house about a week and a half ago and they're um, I think they're doing an inspection which for those of you who've been through it it's a little stressful at times and um, they also have made an offer on a house down here and looking to hear uh, next week about that so thanks And so we look forward to the arrival of Pastor Amanda and, and Jason. Um, January 1st, here we go. Happy New Year. <laughs> Any other announcements that need to be made? We begin our worship on this Reformation Sunday by remembering you know, how, God, how it is that God chose sinners like us and brought us into this community of faith in the words of the confession and forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. Amen. 
God, our comforter. Like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love and neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Paul writes, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. And we sing the Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress, number 504. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word 
Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come forward now for the children's sermon. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. Welcome. Welcome to heaven. Do you know what today is? Halloween. It's Halloween. That's right. <laughs> that's exactly right. Do you know what else it is? Pardon me? It's, it's a day called Reformation Day. Um, it, and, and it's actually falling right on Sunday, October 31st. And re- I'm not going to explain the whole Reformation for you to, for that. You don't need to worry about that. But I'll tell you a little bit. Of, it's about, it, it happened on October 31st, 1517, so a long time ago. A pastor, um, his name was Martin Luther, Pastor Luther. Um, he had all sorts of ideas about how the church needed to change. And so he wrote a bunch of those ideas down, we call them the 95 Theses, and he nailed them to the church door. Can you imagine? Don't do that here, that's a bad thing. But in those days, the church door was kind of like the bulletin board for the whole community. And so he nailed them to the church door, hoping that the, the whole church would start to discuss these ideas, and then things began to change. <laughs> and I'll just say that that's probably enough of it. And eventually, out of all that, we had this church born that was called the Lutheran Church, um, because we follow this guy named Pastor Luther, or where we follow Jesus, but we, we, we kind of interpret Jesus through this guy named Martin Luther. Anyway, you also said it's Halloween, right? Yeah, it's Halloween. What in the world is Halloween? Halloween um, comes from an old way of saying All Hallows Eve, and they kind of shortened it. You know how people like to shorten words, and they made it into Halloween, because tomorrow, November 1st, is All Saints Day. And so Halloween is the night before All Saints Day. And All Saints Day is the day we celebrate all those people that our Lord has made into God's children, including you and you and you and all these people back here. And so we remember all those saints, all those important people, those children of God that have been important both to the church and to our lives. So tonight, are you coming to Tricks for Treats? Oh, good, you're coming. All right. Um, One thing, you'll get lots of treats. There's lots of good stuff to do. But one thing we have at at, um, Trunks for Treats, sorry. (laughs) One thing we have at Trunks for Treats is a place where you can light a candle. And so you find that place, and you light a candle, and you light a candle to remember one of those saints, or maybe more than one, but one of those saints that God put in your life. And you can put it there, light a candle, and remember that saint, Okay. And it's All Hallows' Eve, the day before All Saints' Day, all right? And lots of treats, too. So come. We'll see you this this afternoon. Thanks. And see you next week, too.
excuse me, but Kevin, that was beautiful. Good morning, church family. Our first Bible reading for today is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. The renewed covenant will not be breakable, but like the old covenant, it will expect the people to live upright lives. To know the Lord means that one will defend the cause of the poor and the needy. The renewed covenant is possible only because the Lord forgave iniquity and not remember sin. Our hope lies in a God who forgets. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Please join me in the reading of the psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams made glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. Mission rage. And the kingdom shake, God speaks, and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolation God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of Jacob is our stronghold. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Paul's words stand at the heart of the preaching of Martin Luther and other Reformation leaders. No human beings make themselves right with God through works of the law. We are brought into a right relationship with God through the divine activity centered in Christ's death. This act is a gift of grace that liberates us from sin and empowers our faith in Jesus Christ. Paul writes, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For though the law becomes the knowledge of sin, but now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all believers. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift 
Though the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effected through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? Is it excluded? By what law? By that of works? No. But by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Jesus speaks of truth and freedom as spiritual realities known through his word. He reveals the truth that sets people free from sin. The Gospel according to John chapter 8. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Sisters and brothers in faith, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The reputation of Lutherans, in the, at least in the Midwest, is that we're, I don't know, dull? <laughs> um, kind of vanilla Christians, maybe? That's not always been so. We have some core values that people gave their lives for during the Reformation some 500 years ago. Can you imagine? They gave their lives for these things. Sometimes we call them doctrines, but that word has such bad connotations these days. Like these, things that are, these are things that the church is going to stuff down your throat. But that's not what they are at all. At least they shouldn't be. They're revolutionary ideas that Martin Luther and the reformers rediscovered in their Bibles, and they were absolutely life-giving to them. They sound kind of boring today, but I'd like to revisit them for a few minutes today to see if we can rediscover what was life-giving in them. The most familiar one is justification by grace through faith. And immediately, at least in English, we kind of get the wrong idea when we hear that. It sounds like you have to do something to be justified. You must have faith. You must believe, and if you have faith, then God justifies you. And that's exactly the opposite of what Luther meant by that phrase. I remember when I was a kid, I thought, you know, if I'm good, my parents will love me. And so I tried to be good, at least when they were looking. <laughs> And if I'm bad, well, who knows? Who knows where that's going to lead, but it probably won't be good. And much later, I realized that they loved me all along. No matter what I did, they loved me. And that realization took such a weight off my shoulders. I could quit trying to earn it and just trust it, enjoy it. You could say I went from a, a childish faith, believing that I had to earn their love, to a childlike faith, trusting them. 
Justification by grace through faith is like that. Paul says in our lesson from Romans, for there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift, a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus says much the same thing in our reading from John today. He says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And one way to hear that is to assume the truth is believing all the right things about Jesus. You have to get it it right. Everything from the virgin birth till he shall come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Feeling like you have to get it right is childish faith. What Jesus was actually saying is that the truth is not a set of facts or doctrines that you have to assent to. The truth is Jesus himself. Remember when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life? And to know the truth, to know him, is to be in relationship with this Jesus who loves you already, who always has, and who gave his life for you. You are justified by grace as a gift already. Trust him. Bask in the wonder of his love for you. The childish faith of trying to believe right becomes a childlike faith of trusting the one who made you and loves you. That's what justification by grace through faith is about. God has already made you his beloved child relax and trust his promises to you. And what could be better than that? I mean, mean, it was news that changed Luther's life from one of unrelenting guilt to freedom, from thinking God hated him and was out to get him to becoming a child of God. It's news that changed a whole continent, changed Europe. It's news that changes us all, I believe. It's kind of like the great Ah, where you can just rest in the arms of a God who loves you, who's not watching your every move. Justification by God's amazing grace for you and me. I mean, why? Why would anybody say no to that? Another concept that Lutherans are famous for is law and gospel. That sounds pretty interesting too, doesn't it? Okay. (laughs) The law for Luther was anything that that tells us what we should do. It's the commandments, but also it's a lot more. It's all the shoulds in your life or all the things we should have done. Uh It often comes in if-then language. If you eat your peas, then you can have some ice cream, right? If you are good, then you will go to heaven. (laughs) If not, well, that would be bad. (laughs) The gospel, on the other hand, tells us what God has already done for us. It's not if-then language. It's more like, because I love you, I died for you and rose again for you to make you my own. Unconditional language. No ifs. And Luther began reading his Bible from that perspective of law and gospel. He'd always heard it as law before, and now he noticed there's gospel. And what matters is what the word of God he found, what it does to you. Sometimes it comes to you as law, as demand. It makes makes us squirm because you know you can't fulfill it. And it comes as gospel, as good news that frees you because our Lord has already fulfilled the demands of the law for you. Another Lutheran idea is simul justus et peccator. Say it with me, simul justus et peccator. It just kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's Latin for at the same time sinner and saint. So what is it and why should we care? It grows out of justification by grace through faith. If God's not testing us all the time, well, that means maybe we can be honest about ourselves. Wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> Tell the truth rather than try to fool everybody. And the truth is, we are all sinners, broken, following the wrong things, 
selfish, cowardly, greedy, you name it, and then self-righteous to boot. <laughs> and all the people in the church are exactly the same as anybody else that way. There's no difference. And yet, and yet, all of us are children of God. And what is a child of God but a saint? See, sainthood is not about what we do. It's about what God has made us. Our Lord washes away all the dirt and gives us the clean clothes of Jesus by grace, for free, a gift. It's not sinner or saint. It's both and, sinner and saint. And forgiven, we confess that we are always sinful and we, we work on it together to be what Jesus calls us to be and what Jesus calls us to do. But the best, the best you can ever say about us is that we are a community of sinners <laughs> and saints. Jeff Mitchell likes to tell the story of his former pastor who greeted everybody on Sunday morning, good morning, saints. Wouldn't that be kind of fun? <laughs> and the congregation would say good morning and then he'd say, good morning, sinners. <laughs> And they'd say good morning to that too. I kind of like that. Maybe we should do it. <laughs> Another word that Luther used a lot is vocation, calling. In Luther's time, religious callings to be a priest or a nun or something like that were somehow better, were somehow considered more holy. They were considered higher callings. And sometimes they still are. Justification by grace through faith changed all of that. We're all saints, we're all sinners. But God gives each of us a calling, a vocation, to serve God by serving the neighbors that we find around us. Your vocation is the intersection of your talents and gifts and passions with your neighbor's need. That's your, your calling. And God put each one of us in a unique place in the world. Nobody has your combination of talents, gifts, and passions, and relationships. Serve God there. That's your calling, your vocation. Or callings, I should say, because, because you're a follower of Jesus probably in many settings, at work and at home, in your community, in your country, in your church, in your family. Do what Jesus would do in all of those places. That's your vocation. There's no higher calling than that. Okay, that's enough of that. Those are a few core values of Lutherans. It all begins with a, with a God who justifies us by grace as a gift through what Jesus did. Because we have a God who loves us, we're all simul justus epicot, or sinners and saints. And we all have a vocation, neighbors to serve, a reason to be here. It's down-to-earth good news that was life-giving to the reformers and gives us life, too. Amen. Please rise for the hymn. Free to run. I am free to run. 
to dance. I am free to dance. I am free to live for you. I am free to live for you. I am free. I am free. I am free to run. I am free to run. I am free to dance. I am free to dance. I am free to live for you. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Let us pray. We pray, Lord, for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Hear us, O God. Father, as our leaders meet in Scotland, we pray for your creation, for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for this world that you so love. Hear us, O God. We pray for all who aspire to public office and for all who will vote on Tuesday at local polling places. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Hear us, O God. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit. Especially today, we pray for Robert Cooper, for David Sandy Archibald, for Ryan Mall, Ann Burt, and those we name in our hearts. Father, be with each of them and strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, and recovery centers to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live the abundant life that you intend. Hear us, O God. We give thanks, Father, for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage in our time, through their example, to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation. Hear us, O God. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And we have a chance now to share our Lord's peace with one another. We aren't supposed to shake hands or hug, but you can wave, you can wink, you can um, press your heart button, whatever you've got. We can. Please be seated. We continue with our offering.
Please join me in the offering prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The meal is now ready. You are all invited to come receive the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation that our Lord offers us at the table. Communion this morning will be in a continuous fashion. There will be a station on either side of the center aisle. You may come up as the ushers um, direct you, receive the gifts, and go back to your seats by the side aisle. Um, Communion this morning, we have um, wine, which is a purple liquid. You can take that, or if you'd prefer grape juice, that's a yellow liquid, and it's in the center um, of the tray. Um, for, for wafers, we have regular wafers. We also have gluten-free. If you'd prefer a gluten-free wafer, please take it from the smaller chamber of, of the plate. Um, we also have um, goldfish, so um, bring the kids. They can, they've got stuff, too, so please come. <laughs>
please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now, as you go into our, your week, hear our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.